Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we are going to be taking a look at a video that focuses on topics 110 to 113 which is quite a big span of topics but for right now all I want you guys to think about are the fact that these topics all revolve around continuity. So we're talking about how to tell if there are certain kinds of continuities or discontinuities, I should say, within a particular function. And this video is going to focus specifically on example two from my guided practice curriculum module. So that particular example looks a little something like this. Consider the function g of x to be x squared plus 3x minus 40 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. We want to list the x values where g of x is not continuous and classify each type of discontinuity. Write those intervals over which the function g of x is continuous. So really, the thing that we want to focus on is whenever you have a rational function. Now think about rational function is just a fraction. Whenever we have denominators in that fraction, we will have discontinuities, period. Okay, it doesn't matter if they stick around or if they cancel. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do with this problem is do some factoring. And so upon careful examination, we see that the numerator breaks down into, I believe, x minus uh, 5 times x plus 8, I believe. We'll double check and make sure that does give us a plus 3x in the middle, and it does. And then the denominator is going to factor into x and x, probably go with a 5 and a 2 in order to make that 10, although 1 needs to be negative and 1 needs to be positive. But in order to get this negative 3x in the middle, that 5 is going to take on the negative value, the minus, and the 2 is going to be the plus. And then what we determine here is eventually a couple of things are going to cancel and we get x plus 8 over x plus 2. Now this is where you have to start thinking, because to be honest, to get to this location, an Algebra 1 student can do that, right? But what we have to do as calculus students is analyze, analyze what does all of this mean. So the bottom line is, anytime that you have denominators, you are going to have discontinuities. So there is certainly a discontinuity when x is 5, there's a discontinuity when x is negative 2 but we have to classify each type of discontinuity. And so we have two different versions. We have the removable, we have the non-removable. Anytime a denominator cancels, I want you to think of that as that having it having been removed. Cancel means removed. Pretty easy to think of it that way. So you can say that there is a removable discontinuity at x equal 5. Now, if by some chance you have a denominator factor that does not cancel, then it is not going to be removed. So we could say then that we have a non-removable. Sometimes non-removable is hyphenated. I don't worry so much. Yes, we can do some abbreviation. Um, this is probably going to be discussed in class live with you. As long as you use abbreviations that are pretty apparent, I'm okay with that. I would rather you not say RD or ND. I think we need a little bit more than just that. If you're not sure, just discuss it with me. So those are your two statements of discontinuity. Now the question did ask to write the intervals over which the function was continuous. So basically this function is continuous everywhere besides those two numbers. And maybe the easiest way to do that is just to string together some nice interval notation. So in other words, you're going to start at the very far left, which is negative infinity, and move on towards negative 2, your first discontinuity. Make sure you use an open parenthesis so you don't include the negative 2. And you can separate your new intervals with either a union symbol, that's what I'm using, or you could use a comma. Either one is fine. Or you know what? If you use nothing at all to link them, at least I'll understand what you're, what you're trying to do. And that's just list a bunch of intervals over which we're con continuous. And I'm OK with that. 
right? So that might be the best looking answer. And that pretty much will wrap up example two. That's all that would have to be written and it conveys the idea. Now, I'm gonna just very, very quickly, I'm gonna throw in a graph here if you guys don't mind. I've gone ahead and sketched this particular graph and I wanted to point out to you the difference between the non-removable and the removable uh, discontinuity. At negative two, you can see, or maybe you will eventually see if we kind of mess with this a little bit, that this graph is gonna have this nice vertical asymptote relationship. I could keep going higher and higher and I know that that graph will never ever break the barrier of x equal negative two. Likewise down here. So you pretty safe assumption that that negative two is certainly a non-removable discontinuity. Now with most graphing utilities, the problem that we have is that x equal five, you can't really tell if there's anything bad happening, right? Now maybe, maybe I could try to zoom in where x is equal to five several times. And I do encourage you to play around with that. It is kind of difficult to make sure that your zoom centering is right there at that point that you need to be on, but it's something that you can try to investigate and you're gonna see something really crazy happening with the graph. But as far as this graph is concerned, if I wanna put that non-removable, I'm sorry, that removable discontinuity in that spot, I have to do something kind of clever by going into a geometry feature, choosing points and maybe selecting a point on and then I have to manually go to one, two, three, four, five, right about here, and then boom, I'll just place a point right there. It's about as close to the point where X is five as I can get. I might go ahead and get rid of the ordered pair, and then I have to manually control menu on that to change the attributes to be, say, an open circle like that. So there really is no automation that's going to take place with this graphing utility to show that that is a removable discontinuity. However, I wanted you to see exactly what this graph would look like in its true form. So we have the vertical asymptote and the, and the hole. All right, I hope this video helps. Uh, definitely tune in to watch some of our other videos on continuity and uh, you know, keep working.